Hey everyone, my name is Drew, and we're here for week number four of the UBL loads here offseason. And we're here up against Hannons and his New York Charmanders. It's been a very, very long time since we battled him. And I'll be honest, the team that he drafted is one of the scariest out there. He has just so, so many threats. He has Scyther, which is arguably one of the best mons in the format. He sniped my Hitmonchan, which I really, really wanted. You guys can see the team preview here, but he left some really problematic things for me on the bench, right? He had a Tangela, a, a Colossal, just really problematic things that I really don't manage that well. And if you do pick up my sets, I think it'll give a lot of context for that. Honestly, like half my mods at least have Subtoxic in particular, just to try not to get Leech Seeded up, sleep powdered by this Tangela, that's, which doesn't even come, which kind of blew my mind a little bit, but we'll get onto that later. Also, I tried a new breeding system and a bunch of the nicknames that I intended got scuffed with my breeder really quickly. Kingler's meant to be Tsushima, Gabite is meant to be Left Shark, Persian's meant to be Fathead, and Rotom is meant to be Top Lane. And other than that, just looking at the team, right, I have to deal with this Scyther, right? So having to deal with a Scyther and a Tangle at the same time is genuinely really, really difficult. So I, I just kind of did what I had to do in this team building. Uh, Hitmonchan was really un unexpected for me. Kadabra's a monster against me. Uh, Kadabra's going to be really difficult. Rapid Ash is also just kind of really difficult for me. So look, Goo is going to take some maneuvering, and Quagsire, Quagsire is a really high tier pick in, in this format, and you could definitely see why, right? I mean, for, first of all, against my Kingler, it kind of shuts a lot of what I want to do down, right? And again, even beyond that, there were things that I just kind of had to take into account, right? So he had things like Lickitung, like a stun face that I had to, that I had to kind of contend with in team building um, that just made things a whole lot more difficult, but I'm just going to get into the battle pretty quickly. Uh, last thing I'll say is just, again, I kind of wasn't in the right headspace. Obviously, that's why this is being post -comed. Um um, much like the, the last battle, I, I just kind of wasn't feeling up to a live comm. And actually, while I was doing this battle, I was eating in the middle of it because I was just so all over the place. I wish I kind of had everything together better for the for the moment, but my head was was in a bunch of different places. I was hungry, build was kind of awkward, and I had a lot of things to contend with. So I'm gonna get right into the match, and I end up leading off with the Alolan Persian. Now, uh, I think if you know me at all, you kind of know that I really like to lead off with some fast, pivotable mons here, and this is obviously kind of the most pivotable on my team. It can parting shot out, it can kind of um, weaken certain things, get me into favorable positions, um, and it can get me out of bad positions, more importantly, than anything else, right? And I mean, just again, if, if you know me at all, you know that uh, I kind of like that, or, or at least that's I think that's a pattern that should be picked up on. Now, I, uh, obviously, this Scyther gets a really strong knee turn off, turn, uh, turn one, which immediately reveals Scarf. So now um, I kind of freaked out a little bit, like internally, like this isn't supposed to happen. Like, did I mess up a, a, a gen? Did I mess up a, a build? Did I do something wrong here? But no, um, this thing is just genuinely scarved. And he, he revealed a turn one. You can still see it's just putting out so much damage. Um, and you turn did throw me off guard a little bit because um, Parting Shot did feel a little bit obvious on my end. Maybe he was kind of fearing a, a power gem. Maybe, I don't, I don't know. A, a lot of different things could have been going through his head. Uh, it brings in the Hamilton. I get to get out into something for free. Um, I have a bunch of different options here, but obviously it's going to come down to what I want to preserve here. And even just looking back, right? Like, I'm not even sure w w what I want to preserve here. I could try to, ha like, hazard stack up quick quickly. I could try to scare this thing out with, with Zatu. I could try to get a Will-O-Wisp off early with, with with Rotom. I could try to get rocks up early, right? Like, I, right, like I feel like I have a bunch of different options. I could I could go into Kingler, which I didn't even mention. But Kingler just smacks this thing around a little bit if I get the, if I get into the right opportunities. And I think what I was doing, um, why why that took me a minute was because I was actually running Calcs and I was just making sure that I could take a Bandit close combat. And I was I'm pretty sure that I was able to take a, clo a Bandit close combat. Um, if that's the worst case scenario, if I if I'm not able to, t to KO this thing straight out, if it's if something crazy happens, I just wanted to to, to have that little bit of, of insurance through Calcs. Um, and I believe through, through Calx, I made absolutely sure that I was able to, to eat a close combat and be able to, to hit this thing back really hard. Um, HP on my Kingler is not going to matter a whole ton, especially now, again, that I have to keep in the back of my head that the Scyther is, is scarfed and that, and that's something that I'm definitely going to have to contend with. Um, and I see that that does a little bit, uh, significantly less damage that, that, than I would have expected, but so does close combat, right? Close combat does very much, um, less damage than I would have thought, which kind of convinces me that this thing is bulky, is, is at least built bulky. Here. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this confirms um, no attack investment. I think um, even just a little bit of attack investment would have done over half or at least significantly more. Um, but here, um, I have to contend with him going into the Quagsire. Um, I, I go for the Body Slam here, and he goes for... And he reveals Rocky Helmet, which is obviously huge information for, for, for me to know this early on. And I can kind of play off of that a little bit. 
uh it, it is a little bit surprising that he didn't you know go directly into the quagsire on the on the first turn and let him on take that much damage but we're here we're kind of doing our thing and and i'm just trying to figure out what the heck i want to do here um in my head i'm thinking that that a bunch of uh, again a bunch of different mods um make sense here because i had to build for for the scenario because quagsire was going to be such an issue for my team um so, so you can see like i have a I, I, I have a special i have a special uh garbador with, with giga drain i will leave my zatu with giga drain um i ended up going into, into this thing primarily because um the way that this rotom, rotom is built it's meant to kind of lure something in Right, so, so I have two Cobra Berries uh, between my Zatu and, and this thing. My main thinking here was that if I'm able to bait in the Scyther, um, this is supposed to act as a lure for, for, for the Scyther, um, or or for some other mods that just have like random knockoffs or like whatever the case may be. But if I can lure a, a mod like the Scyther for going in, for the knockoff in, in the face of this Rotom, I can eat up a hit, no matter you know if it's banded or whatever the case may be, and I can get a Will O' Wisp off, and ideally kind of manage uh, things going moving forward. Um, but truthfully, I really don't want to take many skulls here, and and, and it's not until I, I was like looking in, in my party to see how like not great I take uh, skulls in general. But I figured if there was any mon that, that's going to be able to, to just like eat, eat, eat a couple hits, and so. Uh, because uh, uh, obviously for that entire like cobra berry scenario to play out i do need quite a bit of hp on, on, on my rotom but you can see like just taking a scald here isn't isn't the, isn't the end of the world i should be able to especially knowing that that the scyther scarfed i should be able to still maneuver around a little bit and ideally take a a scarf knockoff um and kind of do what i need to do right but either way i kind of don't feel like i'm being put in the worst position in the world by letting my rotom take, take a little bit of damage um, and, I, and I'm able to to kind of toxic and, and and dish back a little bit of damage. I really didn't expect him to to, to, to want to toxic here. I honestly went for the shadow ball, thinking that he that he would want to switch out, that, that he would want to re recover, that he would want to like kind of do something else. But I kind of didn't. I very much didn't expect him to just want to um, poison me back. Maybe he he thought that I was gonna make a switch here, and and he wanted to um, toxic whatever whatever was gonna come in. But but yeah, I think now I'm kind of in I'm, I'm kind of in, in the mode where it's like okay I, I I got a big poison out of the way right like that like getting the quagsire down is gonna be huge and if anything this is going to be a turn where he's low enough where he's gonna want to recover um because he can just eat, eat, eat up a shadow ball and and recover up for free and uh, this is gonna be a turn where I could potentially get in my my goodbye for free and I can. Uh, at the very least, get a rocks because rocks is going to be super duper important for for this uh, overall kind of larger game that we're trying to play. He ends up switching out into the rapid ash, which is ideal for me. I don't know what he was expecting. If he was um, kind of playing off of some switch that he was expecting me to make, um, I was confused in the moment, and I'm still not entirely sure now. But regardless, uh, this should get me free, free rocks. It should um, ideally put me in a situation where I think I can kind of. Um, do what I need to do here, right? Uh, he can't really make take any risks here unnecessarily, um, and I have a very very free earthquake. And okay, so 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 one other thing, right? Um, I kind of I kind of didn't even really um respect Gabite that much coming in, 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 into this match. I, I haven't really kind of built with Gabite that much, but Gabite has a base ninety attack set um with stab earthquake. And uh, it, it wasn't until just kind of team team building um, if, before this match in particular, and kind of running some calcs that I really kind of got to appreciate how strong this thing could potentially be. Um, it does kind of put in my head a, a, a couple of, of different scenarios that I think I could kind of play towards in, in the future. But for right now, um, number one priority has to be has to be to get a Brox. I can't really kind of play around and do anything else. But this thing comes in, and I really don't want to take hits from, from anything else, right? Like, like, I'm in the same scenario as the Quagsire, right? I really don't want to take Scalds over and over again. And once again, I kind of go into Rodent thinking that it's going to be kind of my best possible sponge for damage here. And uh, he, he does go for the, for, for the Ice Beam, so he, so he has the Ice Beam. I thought, obviously, Dragon Pulse was, was just as kind of viable here. But regardless... I'm not, I'm not in a great situation, and I believe I just Volt Switch on, on this turn. I don't even try to Toxic because uh, Switches are kind of um, 
very very possible here if not probable and i feel like i can, I can get myself some momentum and I, and also, I still think Rotom has a ton of use still. Um, if anything, I can get a Willow as on something, even though kind of the Culverberry situation is not going to be great for me. I can talk to something later on. I can. Uh, this Rotom still feels like it's, it's useful to me. And um, the Toxic does feel a little bit obvious. So maybe he, he wants to make a play where he switches out into something and I can get myself some momentum. But regardless, I want to preserve this thing as, as much as possible. But now I'm in the same situation where I really don't know what I want to bring in here, right? But uh, at the end of the day, I do end up bringing in my my Persian. And it's funny. I don't know. I really have never liked use, using Persian. I think it fits my team really well, which is unfortunate because uh, I really don't want to be using a Persian if, I, if, I, if it was up to me. But... Uh, it's funny, I didn't even realize that its special attack stat is higher than its physical attack stat. So, so I've been messing around with some with some special sets, and it has a really interesting move pool. And it's kind of opened my eyes to, to certain ways that that version can, can be used. But here, like I said in, in, in the team preview, uh, Subtoxic felt absolutely necessary in this type of matchup. Regardless, um, I'm at the point now where I, where I can kind of freely parting shot out, and, he, and he's either going to switch out or he's going to... I'm going to take a a really weakened dragon pulse and, and i'm kind of feeling more and more comfortable with maneuvering around in the situation even though um i'm kind of letting my team getting worn down like like if you're just watching this back right now uh i really don't like the fact that i'm getting that i'm letting my team get, get worn down but i did kind of get myself in these jams a little bit um i believe i go out of my garbador because um obviously this thing is, is gonna have s some weakened damage output or i go into zatu which would be strange to me. well okay so so you, you guys can see that this is a stored power cosmic power set a lot of my team builds came down to how am i going to end up at an end game where my zatu can potentially win this game he doesn't have a dark type on his roster he actually drafted a dark type but it was a life card and i was actually I actually kind of partially convinced him that it light part is a bad mod and he'd probably be better off dropping it for, for something like rapid ash because because i don't believe he drafted a fire type or drafted a really bad one or no he, he has a colossal but he doesn't like using it i i i've talked to him I, I know that he doesn't like using it so so i think i i kind of talked him out of live part because he no longer has a dark type it kind of opened me up to for a mono sword power set and um this was a match i'll be honest if if, if, if I do end up winning off of a uh, mono stored power, I'll feel kind of bad about it, but it's not going to stop me from doing it, right? Especially because of all these different types of mismatches and all these different types of um, straight, just straight up bad matchups, right? Like, I don't deal with Kadabra well. Like, I don't have anything that manages Kadabra that well. And uh, even Scyther, right? But we're here. He ends up switching out into, into the Hitmonchan. I... I, I get to go into my Garbodorm. Now, I obviously felt like Rapid Spin was really, really possible here. But, in my head, I was thinking, like, look, I, I need some hazards. And and this is all kind of working, again, towards towards the Zatu endgame, right? So, I'm not even that worried about the Scyther in, in this moment. Um, I know Spin is super possible, but, he, but even, even if he does want to Spin, as long as I end this interaction, because he, he's going to burn himself out to, to Rock Helmet eventually anyway, as long as I... As, as long as he spins and I'm still able to, to get up spikes in the process, I'm fine with it. I will give up that as long as I can keep some la layers of spikes up on the field. Now, we talked after after the match. He expected me in, in that moment uh, to spin block with my Rotom. And it makes a, a ton of sense, right? Like, like it makes a ton of, my, a ton of sense for me to want to keep my 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 Rotom uh, in the back, specifically for spin blocking. That, that was not in my head even a little bit, in the slightest. But... Uh, it did get me into his head a little bit, and it forced him to to ice punch for, for some rock helmet damage. And on the rapid spin, this is a very very niche situation, but there are a couple weird I interactions in, in Pokemon. One of which is, if you click rapid spin into a mon with with rocky helmet, the rocky helmet damage resolves before the 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 hazard removal, and and if the rocky helmet damage causes you to KO yourself, but um. Then, then the hazard removal never gets a chance to resolve itself, which means you can rapid spin into a rocket helmet mod, and if you KO yourself, you don't remove hazard. Which happened here, he goes into Scyther, and and he must have been surprised because he, because he, he goes into Scyther, and um, 
It takes 50% to to the hazards. He clicks dual wing beat, which I think he had to. I, th I think it was probably his, his strongest move against Garbodor. And um, he takes he, he takes 30%, uh, like something like 33% from from hitting into Rocky Helmet twice, as well as 25% from from aftermath. So I never had to touch th this scyther, and it took 50% from rocks, 25 from, from aftermath, and and all all the rest from from two rocky helmet hits. Uh, so Garbodor gets two KOs without like having to damage wands, right? Which which is hilarious to, to think about. But um, that was purely just kind of us uh, uh, playing playing some mind games. Um, like I said, in that moment, I really didn't care as much about about keeping all the, all those hazards or or spin blocking. As long as I can end that interaction with some hazards on, on the field, and me clicking spikes was going to be that, and um, he overpredicted a, 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 a little bit, but overall, I respect the play. Like it makes sense as a play. Um, it just we we just were not on the same wavelength as as to, as to what we expected each other to do in that situation. However, once again, Persian gives gives me those options. Um, I. I, I think this is 100% a, a misclick here. If I remember right, I click substitute on this turn, and that's just 100% a, a misclick on my part. Like I clicked sub, and I panicked. I was like, "Oh my god!" I I just like threw away Persian. But then, but then, like I had a, a, like another split second to think about it, and I was thinking, "Oh, he's he, he's low enough where where he's gonna th this is a, a forced recover turn for him anyway, so he's not gonna do anything that that would kind of." Um, jeopardize him being able to, to to recover so thankfully i i i got a free turn but um as soon as i pr pressed the, the sub button i got a little bit of panic because i really thought that i just th thrown away persian for this end game and and just throwing away him on like an end game on that that's so valuable that it, that's as valuable as that persian would have been bad for me but this is this is an interesting moment right because i i parting shot um because you have to remember too, right? I I now have th two or three layers of spikes and rocks up, and in my head this and 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 this thing is toxic, right? So in my head, this is the most set up I'm ever going to be for a Zatu endgame. So, um, so literally like like I just did what I was going to do in in the moment, and I parting shot it into my Rotom. I sacked the Rotom to go back into this thing to get another parting shot off onto the Quagsire, so that I can um let my Zatu come in and attempt a hard setup here. Which, honestly, uh, who knows how strong of a play that is? But like I said, if there's any moment where this is going to work, it's going to be right the heck now, right? Um, there is going to be no better moment for me to kind of make this work. So, he he goes for Toxic on this play. I get to Magic Bounce back. It doesn't matter. It's fine. I point is, I just get a free turn to kind of do whatever I need to. Um, but Toxic is t is ticking down really really quickly, which is which puts me in an awkward position because it doesn't give me that many turns. However, I I know 100% that I'm gonna want to get a Cosmic Power up. I hopefully don't get burned on a potential Scald, but um. I'm protected from from being toxic, and, that, and that's honestly why Zatu is a number one pick, right? Like this set is exactly why Zatu is a is a tier one mon in this format. Um, he does not get a burn off a of scald, but I see how little damage that does, and it that was an awkward voice crack, and it really uh, gives me a bunch of confidence to be able to get behind a sub and kind of do certain things that I really want to do in this scenario. Um, I do have a Cobra Bear. I think uh, this Cobra Bear is going to be confirmed like useless because I believe the only mods in the back are a Kadabra and a Rapidash. So um, it's just not going to do anything, which is unfortunate because leftovers would have honestly been incredible in this moment. But we're here and we're going to do what we can. Uh, so now we're at plus one, uh, plus one and behind us up. We have one Cosmic Power up behind us up. Um, whatever comes out, I can kind of pretty safely get up another cosmic power up on and we can kind of see wherever we end up from there and it's in this moment where where i start to kind of feel out how the how the rest of this match is going to go he clicks shadow ball and and panic is starting to set in right because because i'm starting to, to, to run some calcs and i have to assume obviously this thing is magic art it well it, it just confirmed it's magic art or boots or whatever it may be but um, the life orb set just 
has so much damage output that that two cosmic powers isn't even enough to mitigate a life orb Kadabra's shadow ball, right? Um, I have to be a plus three for it to do like on under fifty percent, so that I can I can start to set up on it, and I start panicking, right? And and I genuinely I, like at this point I genuinely have no game like my like game plans are all out the window. I'm just trying to like think on my feet and trying to figure out like what's my backup plan here because um, I'm not in a good position anymore because um, because I'll, I'll, obviously I knew that Life Orb Kadabra puts out a lot of damage, but I was really hoping that. If I did set up, that Zatu would be in a position where we, where it would have been set up more. But again, um, that Toxic onto that Quagsire racked up so much more quickly than I would have thought that it just put me in an awkward position. And actually, I'm literally just putting two and two together right now. That turn where I misclick Substitute might have been a, a huge difference maker in how this match turns out. Because if I parting shot it and done all that uh, earlier, I would have one extra turn, which would have given me one extra cosmic power for the scenario, which could have potentially been the difference between Zatu, you know, hunt, just closing out that game on that turn right there, like as soon as Kadabra came in, and just cosmic powering up to a million and being able to like legitimately win the match from there. Um, but anyway, all, 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 all this happens, we're here. Oh, this is lose also there. But all, all, all this happens, we're here now. And, um, and I, I bring in Goodbye. Again, I'm, I'm kind of panicked. I really don't have game plan anymore. This I'm on, like, plan C at this point. Oh, thinking about what plan D through F is going to be, right? And, and, um, my only thought was I can go into Goodbye. I could at least put pressure onto the Kadabra. Now, and, and to be completely honest, Gabite took that Shadow Ball a lot better than I would have expected, and there's a reason for that that I'll get into in a little bit. But, um, I can fire off an EQ, he sacks off the Slugu, and at first I kind of thought that the Slugu, um, that the, that the Slugu being especially defensive mattered a ton in that moment, but we kind of talked after the match and, and just like ran some calc, and whether it was max special defense or max physical defense, because of all, the, all, all those hazards, Earthquake was always going to be a 2 KO. So now, anyway, that's kind of neat to hear right there. But he, he, he brings out the Rapid Ash, and he's only after the match, <laughs> genuinely, that he changed his Rapid Ash kind of last second. And Rapid Ash was meant to have um, Play Rough on its set, but he took it off at the, at, at the last moment. So now his strongest move to hit me is, is, is Flare Blitz. He goes for the Flare Blitz. Um, that's never really that much of a concern. It doesn't do that much damage. I get off a really strong Earthquake, and I pick up like an, an, another KO. A bite racking up two KOs in this in this moment, and it's dawning on me, it, kind of in this moment, but m m maybe like a, 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 a turn or two before this is starting to dawn on me. But this Kadabra could very easily be scarfed, right? And the way that it only used Shadow Ball so far is kind of putting in my head that this thing is scarfed. And if this thing is scarfed, I don't have anything else on my team that's that can kind of stand up to this thing. And in fact, if this thing is scarfed, that means that even my Zatu a few turns before, even at plus two through Cosmic Power, if I stayed in, then Zatu wins off rip because Shadow Ball is not able to do over 50%. However, none of that matters because a Gabite was just a tank. He was just a monster. He was able to take those, those scarfed hits he locks himself into Shadow Bomb, which is really relevant because he also told me after the match that that um, the set had Dazzling Gleam and he could have locked himself into Dazzling Gleam, which I'll talk about in just another second. And that is week four. We win it 4-0. And there were a lot of kind of ways that that, that endgame could have branched out, right? And I want to talk about a couple of them. So I had no way of knowing that that Kadabra was Scarfed, especially because the Scyther was Scarfed. That was confirmed on turn one, literally. And so truthfully, it wasn't even on my mind that the Kadabra could, could be scarfed. Again, until I was already like thinking through plans, you know, C, D, E, F. It wasn't until that I was thinking through all those scenarios that, oh, this Kadabra could easily be scarfed. And if it's scarfed, which explains why my Gabite's taking these hits so well, if it is scarfed, then my Kingler's scarfed, but it's not fast enough to have speed scarf Kadabra. My Persian is low enough for Shadow Ball KOs. My Zatu, after switching it out because I uh, gave up all those Cosmic Power boosts, can no longer stand up to it. And it's literally the entire game rests on whether or not my, my goodbye can take a scarf shadow ball and thankfully it did and thankfully it, it picked up a ko but that goodbye was my last line of defense and thankfully it held up but um that was the difference between me winning and losing that game right so that's scenario one and obviously had i known that it was scarfed which i had no way of knowing but had i known then what i should have done was stayed in because even a even a max special attack um scarfed 
Kadabra does less than 50% to my Zatu, which means that I could set up on it and get and roost off the damage and get back up to Cosmic Powering Up, and Zatu could potentially win the game from there. But I was scared. I didn't know that it was Scarfed. And again, the only thing that I was looking through via calcs was just how much damage that Life Orb was outputting and knowing that I could not manage that at all. So I switched out and potentially th threw the game on that turn. And obviously kind of that last kind of branching outcome was if that Rapidash had kept Pl Playroll from one of its earlier sets, then it would have been able to to get the damage that, that it needed for the Kadabra to come in, clean up the KOs, and Kadabra just gets four, four KOs and wins the game. But all those things had to go cor correctly for, for a good bite to, to kind of be my last line of defense win the game from there and that's just kind of how it goes there are so many little tiny decisions and so many kind of branching um decision trees that, that decide how these end games go and this was just a really really fun match um this was one of these matches that was even more even more fun to just talk about it after the match ended but uh that is going to be week four thank you guys so much for watching we did pick up the win and it was a really really stressful win but once again, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the UBL and more weeks of the UPBA, both of which have just been really, really fun to kind of build and battle with. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys.